nation of Haiti is at an absolute crisis point with the country's prime minister stepping down today in an effort to restore peace to the poorest nation in the Western Hemisphere. Gangs have flooded the streets of Haiti's capital, Port-au-Prince, shutting down the airport, attacking political buildings and killing people at will. Some analysts say the current crisis is the predictable result of the dismantling of Haiti's democracy by corrupt, repressive Haitian governments supported by the United States. With us today to discuss the evolving situation is Brian Concanon, executive director for the Institute of Justice and Democracy in Haiti. Welcome. Well, thanks, Brianna, and thanks, Robbie, for having me. And thanks Thank even more for covering Haiti. No, it's really important to do so. So for people who are coming into this sort of fresh, how did we get to a position where the prime minister is not only just resigning, but he's been struggling to get back into the country? Isn't that right? Yes, he's been uh, stuck in Puerto Rico. He uh, has, he did promise to resign. He has not actually resigned. He said he would resign. First, he said he would resign when a new presidential transitional council comes in. And then second, he said he would resign when there's a new government, which the, the transitional council will probably happen soon, but a new government could take some time. So it's possible he'll be there for a while, and I expect he probably will be allowed to return. But it's important to note that uh, the prime minister, Ariel Henry, was not installed in his position through any Haitian procedure. He was installed in in. July of 2021 by an announcement by the core group, which is a group of foreign countries led by the United States. So he had originally been named by President Jovenel Moise before uh, the two days before Moise was assassinated, but he was not actually installed until uh, 10 days later when the international community led by the U.S. named him prime minister. And I remember covering the assassination actually on this show uh, when I was hosting with Ryan Grimm some time ago. Have we learned anything more about, because I remember the speculation that Ariel Henry or U.S. forces or Western forces were actually involved in that, which would you know raise the specter of this being uh, a coup of sorts. Do we have, now that more time has elapsed, any clarity on how that transition actually took place? We have some clarity far from absolute clarity. It, it seems fairly settled that it was an inside job that people associated with President Moise and his PHTK political party were, were the main drivers of it. A court has, a char has charged his wife. Many people have implicated uh, the current Prime Minister Ariel Henry, and a lot of the people that have been indicted, especially in the United States, have connections to U.S. intelligence or or um, other law enforcement services. So there's there's certainly people with U.S. connections. I don't think there's yet been a kind of a smoking gun that the U.S. was actually behind the 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 assassination. But it is fairly clear that people associated with with uh, President Moise's political movement which has also been supported by the United States for the last uh, last dozen years, were behind the killing. So you just, you know, insinuated, you know, you talked about the speculation that um, uh, the U.S. is not is, is choosing, rather, the leadership of Haiti. It seems like Henri was the Amer America's choice at that time. Now you've written that they've lost faith and confidence in, uh, in Henri, and that is part of why he's struggling to regain control or establish control in the country. Uh, why do you believe it is that Henri has fallen out of America's favor? He was there, not because the United States particularly liked him, but he was there to do a job, which was to try to keep Haiti, um, the lid on Haiti, so Haiti was not going to be an embarrassment to the administration, and also to perpetuate the rule of the PHTK party, which has been very friendly to the United States and has suppressed progressive Haitian political parties. Mm -hmm. uh, it became clear after gangs started uh, taking over government uh, facilities, including police stations, that uh, Ariel Henry was no longer able to serve as a useful tool. So that pretty much made mm. the decision uh, an easy one to, to not let him continue in office. Mm. So what is it then, there's so much attention being paid to the violence itself, what is it that the people are agitating for? 
I mean, what the average Haitian is ad ad agitating for is democracy. Uh, the gangs and and a lot of the political actors. There, this is a negotiation. I think the the gangs have already started to pull back in part because I think they got a lot of what they wanted to. So just today, the National Port Authority announced that they've retaken the port from the gangs, and I think a lot of it, a, a lot of the the gangs got a lot of what they wanted from negotiations that took place yesterday in Jamaica. And the, the prime minister's uh, announcement of a future resignation was part of those negotiations. Another part is that uh, seven sectors were granted the a seat on this transitional council that is going to run Haiti until and, and run the next elections, hopefully to be taken over by a, a legitimate Haitian government. But the gangs got a, a lot of important influence within that that council. Um, one of the one of the, uh, the the seven sectors that that is allowed to 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 be part of the to name a council member is the current government, which has been collaborating with gangs uh, for for years. Another sector is a political party that just last week announced uh, an alliance with Guy Philippe, who's one of the main armed group leaders. So the gangs probably got a lot of what they wanted, and I think they're they're going to probably recede somewhat back to their to their to their fiefdoms and get back to their core business of of kidnapping and organized crime um and and they'll probably be allowed significant latitude and given influence in the new government mm. can you also speak to uh plans according to cnn reporting uh the u.s contributing planning to contribute 300 million dollars to uh, security involving uh, troops from Kenya to bring security and stability to Haiti. Um, you know, what is the international community doing right now? So the Kenyan force was first requested by uh, Ariel Henry, and it was requested back in 2021 because his, or sorry, 2020 because his government was facing protests. And he asked the force to come, really to prop up his regime. The the force is, it's, it, hey, Kenyan courts have said it's illegal under Kenyan law. It's illegal under Haitian law. Uh, but it looks like the U.S. is dead set on, on having it come. And its purpose is going to be to, its official purpose is to restore security. It's very hard to see how that's going to happen. This is right now, I believe it's up to about 3,000 people who are coming. That comes close to replacing the amount of Haitian police officers who have left over the last couple of years, but it replaces them with people who don't know Haiti, who don't speak Haitian Creole, aren't able to do the kind of you know community police or other interactions that successful police were Work requires so most observers think that the, that the that the force can can um, perhaps hold some public spaces, defend the airport, things like that. Uh, if it's going and that the gangs are just going to go back into the neighborhoods where they enjoy some support and dislodging them from those neighborhoods is going to require uh, shooting large amounts of bullets. Uh, one example of how this can be done was from the last international intervention, which was a UN mission deployed in 2004. They, they were involved in spectacular massacres. One of them, there were literally 20,000 bullets shot in a single operation in Cité Soleil, which is a really crowded area um, filled with, with thin walled houses. Those 20,000 bullets killed uh, an uncounted number of Haitian civilians. It did kill the gang mem the alleged gang members that the UN said they were trying to get, uh, but it also killed many other people. It appears that, that we're going to have a, a rerun of, of those kinds of tactics, uh, which is, of course, deeply unsettling. And one measure of, of perhaps how unsettling this is going to be is this mission was approved by the UN Security Council, but the Security Council made it a non-UN mission, which means the Security Council knows, and actually the Secretary General actually admitted this, that, that it is going to require too much of what he called robust offensive capabilities for it to qualify as a peacekeeping mission. So the UN uh, approved the mission, but made it explicitly a non-UN mission, so the UN will not have to take responsibility for the Haitian civilian deaths that are going to happen. Uh, so recruiting these Kenyan troops is an end run around America wanting to 
uh, advance its political goals, its political interests in Haiti without itself sitting boots on the ground. And the UN also says, I don't want my handprints on this, given how disastrous uh, our last intervention was and how violent this is likely to be. And as you write, it's likely to be caught on camera in a way that is very persuasive politically, as we've been seeing in recent events elsewhere in the world. Um, can you just speak before we um, wrap up here to what America's interest in Haiti, in fact, are. Earlier, you alluded to the fact that it has um, propped up various uh, leaders in an effort to derail more progressive democratic leaders in the country. To what end? So that, that's the, the question everybody always asks. And the only way to answer that really is the long-term one. Haiti became an independent country in 1804 through a slave rebellion, becoming an independent country in a world dominated by slave powers. The slave powers, including the United States, refused to recognize it because we could not allow Haiti to succeed because Haiti's success would undermine the, the white supremacy upon which our success depended. We got our money through, through, through slavery. And Haiti still poses the same threat. When Haiti elects uh, fairly elects its leaders as it did in 2000, those leaders are going to challenge the international world order. They're going to go to the UN and talk about the international economic order. They're going to call for reparations for slavery. And the U.S. believes that's a, a threat to our, our lifestyle because if if Haiti is allowed to advocate for a more just world, other countries are going to do that too, and that's going to force us to compromise on, on some of our benefits. And in fact, when Haiti's president elected in 2000 started to make those claims at the UN and elsewhere, literally France and the US got together and forced him on a plane and sent him to the Central African Republic. Mm. Mm. Brian, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thank you for having me.